Hey everyone, it's Zach with Palantir Research. Palantir's next explosive market, in my opinion, is not a secret, even though you're not seeing it in the numbers today. And if we look at these countries spending, actually, I can see Palantir getting the tens, if not hundreds of millions down the line if things play out right. So first, Alex Karp has been making the rounds in the Baltic region by speaking at the Estonian event, Tallinn Digital Summit. While there, Alex Karp, of course, spoke about the implications of artificial intelligence in the defense context, and of course, how the war in Ukraine is being played out as a technological war that is influencing how future wars and defense spending will come to fruition. So check out that video there. It's on Palantir's site. But just for the record and a shout out to Arnie's channel, who is always great at getting these talks way before anyone else posts them, even before Palantir does themselves. Now, the juicier stuff here, Alex Karp, of course, in Estonia, also met with the prime minister herself. So forgive my pronunciation here. I think it's Kaja Kalas. I don't know the exact conversations, but Pounder Chad, who's also very active on X or Twitter on Palantir, a shout out here to get the fast news. Note, the conversation may hold more than just military and defense spending and possibly medical technology and energy, which is always a bright spot here and Pounder is already huge in. So it's good to see that they're talking about things besides the defense context. Now, also while there, Alex Karp had the chance to meet with Finland's Minister of Defense, Antti Haken. So again, forgive my pronunciation there. And the big news earlier this year was Finland officially joining NATO after needing to be neutral on paper for decades after World War II due to the Soviets at the time and now Russia. But this was obviously due to the aggression in Ukraine that things have changed. So there was really no more option left for them and Finland decided to join. Now, of course, these two countries' leaders are in the Baltic region right by Russia, so their motivation in defense are much more prioritized than, say, more Western European countries. Although the rhetoric does seem to be all the same that we're going to be up in arms, but these Baltic countries in particular are feeling it much more and are on higher alert. Now, for me personally, and my lack of experience in geopolitics, I'd say it's silly for Russia to attack a NATO country since it'd be attacking the alliance as well, but you never really know what can happen in the world. So everyone wants to prepare, and for the context on Finland and Estonia's defense spending, Finland historically has been one to prioritize defense just due to their geographic location, and they would theoretically already meet their native requirements of 2%. They do plan to do around $6.5 billion, or 2.3% of their GDP, so that's much higher than other members who don't even meet the threshold. Now, from NATO's report earlier this year, there was an estimated $7.3 billion, so the actual spending might be actually lower than what NATO is expecting, but it's still a large sum in comparison to their economy. Now, Estonia is much smaller at around $1.1 billion, but remember, in the context of their economy, this is large at around 2.73% of their GDP. But just to show the urgency they feel, they've been pretty much vocal about NATO needing to increase their spending requirements for member countries, and honestly, it's good reason here considering the others aren't really meeting that threshold. And then for more context, just look at the countries around them. They're spending much less than that 2% minimum here by the numbers, so it really shows that the Baltic states really are on high alert in the coming years. Now, let's move on to Palantir and what this means. This is always great to see, I think, when CARP is meeting with these world leaders. And we know in the defense context, Palantir is the next big opportunity for them concerning what they're seeing in Ukraine. But also, since they're seeing that stuff in Ukraine, they have an idea of what to expect already with that software. Now, they're probably not going to get it for free, of course, and get it free from a war. But now they have an idea on how they can utilize it and have a better idea of Palantir actually improving the software because it's actually battlefield tested. And then from these nominal figures too on defense spending from NATO, if Palantir can penetrate even into the single digit percentage of spending for these countries, at least in their defense wise, that's still tens of millions of dollars. Now, over time, if they can scale and spread throughout to other kind of aspects of the government, that's where the opportunity here can run into the hundreds of millions of dollars over years. Now, I think also the biggest opportunity is once they get in through defense with their governments and those different governing bodies, like the notes on speaking with the Estonian prime minister, healthcare and energy are big opportunities where Pounder already has been working here with other countries around the world and have become industry experts, I'd say for myself, with their software, considering the partners they've worked with and the scaling that they've done and the use cases that they've built up over time. So it'd be nice to see if Palantir can scale on the government and commercial side in these countries. I'm not expecting it to happen in their numbers right now, but in the years to come at least. And after the Russia-Ukraine war, I would not be surprised to see more spending from this region overall, considering they want to beef up their defense anyways. But what are your thoughts on Palantir in the Baltic states and meeting with the world leaders? It'll probably take a while to ramp up, like I said, but sowing the seeds now is probably the best action that Palantir can do. And of course, get them publicly out there so that the populations know about them. But let me know below 
and thank you and my channel members and see you in the next video.